Hey, welcome to my channel. I'm Doug from Convology, and in this video, I'm going to go over all of the new Drip features inside of Thrive Apprentice 4.0, and we're going to walk through not only how to set up Drip, but some of the use cases and all of the options and basically everything there is to do with Drip. So let's dive in. All right, because there's so much information, I've gone ahead and I've created a companion walkthrough and guide for this topic. So if you head over to convology.com and I'll put that link down below, you can see that I have created a complete write up with all of the new vocabulary. I have images, I have explanations, I have use cases. Everything that we're going to cover in this video is in this blog post, just in maybe a little bit more written detail. And I get a little bit more specific on some of the fine details. So if you need more information after watching this video, head over to convology.com for all of those details. Okay, let's set up a drip campaign. So I'm going to go into one of my courses here. In this one, we're going to jump into how to write email sequences that convert. And we're going to go to the new drip tab at the top. This should look pretty much familiar. We have course details, content, access restrictions, which if you haven't dived into yet, I have a whole video on products, which is already available on the channel. And I'll link to that somewhere up here for you as well. But we're going to the drip tab. And in the drip tab, you can see here that it says, well, you need to set up drip because you don't have anything. So to get started, we're going to click create new drip campaign. And we're met with our first decision. Now, drip templates. Drip templates is the first new vocab that we need to go over. Drip templates basically means that Thrive has taken some settings, some common drip settings for common use cases, and they've just pre-configured them for you and they've given it a name. Now, I want to just say this right now, and I'm probably going to repeat myself a few times in this video, but the name is just arbitrary. It's just kind of there to help you understand what is going on with the drip campaign, but in no way does the name ultimately matters. What only matters are the settings that you set up for your drip campaign and on your drip timeline. So for the templates, they've created a couple based on common use cases. We have scheduled repeating, which is kind of like on a specific date and time after that time happens. Well, se sequentially or systematically after that, I want the cadence of weekly or monthly. I want things to unlock. Then we have our evergreen repeating, which is just evergreen, right? Someone triggers it by buying it. And then systematically every week or month, they get access to more. We have day of the week or month, which basically is a little more obscure than probably most of you are going to uh, want to use. I personally don't have a use case for this, but this is content that unlocks on a specific week or day of the week rather, or day of the month. For example, content can only unlock on the third Wednesday or content can only unlock on the 27th of every month. Obscure, but perhaps it meets one of your needs. So they've created a template of those settings for you. Then we have drip on specific dates, which is kind of like exactly like it sounds. This is probably really great for live cohorts or live classes that use a virtual component like, like a course that has maybe a video or recap inside of it. Maybe you only want that content to become available on a specific date. Well, setting up your timeline here is very easy and we'll dive into all of that. And then we have two more, and I'm going to go over these last two after we look at some of these settings. So the first one, let's just jump in and take a look at scheduled repeating, and we'll kind of go through the interface to understand how Drip works. So you can see right here, this is a scheduled repeating campaign that's been configured for you, and you just have to give it a name. We'll just call this one scheduled repeating demo. The name doesn't really matter. It's only for you to see. And you'll see what event should trigger this campaign. Because we chose scheduled repeating, it's going to say specific date and time. But I can use this drop down and I can say, well, what's going to trigger this? And again, what triggers the drip campaign is where they kind of get the name. So what triggers this, if I were to change this to purchased product, you can see that this has morphed to an evergreen repeating campaign. And this goes back to what I said, and I'm going to repeat myself again here, that the name is just there as kind of a guide. It's arbitrary, not arbitrary. It, it has a purpose. It's descriptive. It's just descriptive of what you've chosen for your drip settings. And I think that they do this to help you have a frame of reference to kind of understand what you're setting up. I, I think it's helpful. But if I change this back to specific date and time, I'm right back to a scheduled repeating campaign. Again, the name doesn't matter. The campaigns aren't magically different from one another. The rules are the rules. Whatever you set here is what your content's going to unlock on. So I'll probably repeat that a third time. So bear with me. 
So in this case, we are going to release on a specific date and time and unlock systematically. There's our second vocab, systematically, or second or third, I don't know. That's a new vocab. Systematically just simply means every hour, day, week, month, year. It's just kind of like that consistent cadence. It's systematic. The other option is at custom intervals. If you choose custom intervals, we'll take a look at that. It just means you have to, you get granular control. You can go in and say, it's not every week. You can say this one unlocks then, that one unlocks then, this one's an hour apart, this one's a week apart, a month apart. It's not systematic. So scheduled repeating, we have our date 1228 at 12, and we're going to unlock lessons. We could say modules. These are the only two things we can unlock, lessons or modules. And then we're going to have this option that says starting after. You always need to unlock something inside of your course. So in this case, because we chose lessons as the content to unlock, we're going to say after the welcome sequence, after lesson one, meaning lesson, lesson one gets unlocked after that, what is our content unlock schedule? So after the first lesson on 1228, every week or day or month on any day of the week or on every Monday. And again, this option here, a little more obscure, but I think it exists for people that want to send emails on specific days and they don't want to email on weekends or they don't want to give people access on weekends. I think that's why that exists. Um, I'm an any day kind of guy. So for me, every one week on any day, the next lesson will unlock sequentially or systematically. So let's go ahead and click create my campaign and take a look at this. As soon as I create my campaign, I am now in the drip timeline. Throw that on the vocab list. Basically, we are having a visual reference of our drip rules that we just set up. So in this case, we set up a specific time and date, and I'm looking right here, and we chose our unlocks to be every week. Now, let's look below and see we have our campaign schedule. So we have module one unlocks on day zero, which is 1228 at 12. Remember, schedule, date, and time. Lesson one, we chose to unlock with it right away because something has to unlock. Something unlocks with the trigger. So lesson one unlocked. However, systematically, each sequential lesson will unlock one week later. So this lesson, if I hover over this, will unlock one week after the trigger. This next one, two weeks after the trigger. And the next one, three weeks. This essentially is one week. Now I can click on these. And if I click on them, I can add new rules. And I can say, well, maybe this should unlock at another time. And we're going to take a look at this when we look at inherited rules. But I want you to know, that at least for right now, you can click on these and add additional rules. So anything you click here and add is going to be in addition to what you've chosen. So let's go ahead and click on the drip tab at the top. And this is going to be a good time to introduce you to the concept that you can have multiple drip campaigns per course. So that's important. You can have one course, but apply different restrictions and different drips to people based on what product they bought your course in. And I have a video all about products. So if that word products is like throwing you for a loop, go re watch the video and come back because I can add this course, how to write email sequences that convert to any course that I want. And I can apply a specific drip campaign rule to each of those courses. Maybe I have uh, the course available where they get access to it only on specific dates. Maybe I have a live launch cohort. Maybe I want there to be a group that just goes through it at their own pace. Maybe I want another group that gets it evergreen. Whatever the case may be, I can create a campaign for that case. So let's jump back in and take a look at evergreen repeating because we just went through the whole process with scheduled. We'll move a little faster now. I'm gonna click on evergreen repeating and what triggers it? Purchasing the product, classic evergreen. When does it unlock? Systematically. What unlocks? Lessons. I could change that to modules if I wanted to. Then we have starting after, because I said module, it's gonna be starting after module one. And then I can unlock, what's my cadence? I'm gonna do every one week. I could have done every one day. In fact, I'm going to. So I'm gonna say after every one day, that's my campaign and I'll click create. I got to give it a name. We'll call this evergreen repeating demo. And then starting after module module one. Great, so let's take a look at this and this is what I was talking about with inherited. Remember I unlocked module one right when they bought the product and module two they got a day later. Well, there are lessons inside of module two and those are inheriting the rules of the module 
because it's like their parent container. Now, lesson one, let's have that unlock on the same day that the module unlocks, but lesson two of module two, I'm actually going to add another rule for that, and I'm going to say this lesson will be unlocked once the parent module has unlocked, but I wanna add an additional time limit on there. So I'm gonna add another day. And I'm going to say mm, two days. Click save and click save. So now let's look at this. We have content unlocked on day one, add a day, so plus one day. The second lesson or the first lesson in the second module is going to unlock. And then this one is we're going to add two days after the campaign trigger. So again, like I showed you before, this isn't two days after this one, this is two days after the main trigger. So the main trigger was unlock at time of purchase, this one unlocks one day later, and this one unlocks one day later than that, or two total days later. So that's a way that you can come in and check out inherited and check out adding time. Let's jump back up to our drip campaign. We're gonna keep moving a little bit faster and let's take a look at day of the week or month. I'm not gonna jump into examples too deep on this one because I think it's so freaking obscure, but we have basically the user purchases a product and then every week unlock a lesson after lesson one on unlock every month on the 21st of the month or on the first Monday, right? And then click create my campaign. The next one would be drip on specific dates. We'll just jump in here and take a look at this because this does kind of be, this is the first example where you basically have to do almost everything at the timeline view. This is on a specific date and time. I could change this to say on New Year's Day, 2022 at 12, I want content to start unlocking. We'll just call this specific date demo. And then it says here, you're gonna to have to set this at the timeline level for this template. So we'll click create my campaign, jumps us right here. And well, it's gonna give access on day zero to everything unless I come in and say, add a new condition. I want to wait a week after, save on the next one. I want to wait maybe four weeks later on a Sunday, save. And you can see that we've started to add conditions for each individual one. So specific date and time at custom intervals. Now let's talk about start from scratch. Start from scratch real quick. This is basically a blank slate, but is it? Is it really? I'll just call this one scratch demo. As soon as I start choosing options, you're gonna watch the screen morph, right? So if I say the trigger is user purchase as a product systematically, that's evergreen. So look, now it's evergreen. You're familiar with that. If I go back and I choose start from scratch and I say specific date, I bet you know what's gonna happen. There it is, scheduled repeating. If I change that to custom intervals, it's drip on specific dates. So you can start from scratch, but you're probably going to fall in within one of these templates anyway, regardless. I think I was able to find one where like it was a true start from scratch. If you make this like purchases uh, a product, at custom intervals. Yeah, there it is. User purchases a product at custom intervals, unlock content. That still called itself start from scratch, but it's pretty similar to the other ones. So just know that, again, the name doesn't matter. This is the third time I'm saying this. The name doesn't matter. Your rules do. Just make sure the rules match what you want and who cares what they call it. All right, so the last one I want to talk about, and this is a good time for me to bring up, probably should have said it at the beginning of the video, but I'm looking at a demo version of this. We're still not at the launch date for Thrive Apprentice 4.0. So this is kind of like a preview and things are subject to change. So some of this interface might change. Some of these settings might change. And one thing that is sure to change is the fact that Thrive Automator Unlock is still coming soon. But let me tell you a little bit about that. Basically, as it says here, use Automator and trigger third-party integrations that unlock dripped content. So think about Automator. Automator allows webhooks. It integrates with your autoresponder tags. It integrates with a lot of different things via API and webhooks. So you could have a third-party tool that doesn't fit one of these use cases or use parameters and maybe you want an uh, active campaign based off of someone's link clicks in their email to trigger a random webhook, and that random webhook then triggers a drip lesson. I don't know why you would do that, but you can do that. So if you have a fringe case, Thrive Automator was built for you. So now we've set up our drip campaigns and we have several different ones. It's time to apply these so that they can get applied to users. 
And again, if you haven't checked out my product video yet, definitely please do that. It'll give you some more insight into how products work. But we are going to dive into the products tab and we're going to take a look at applying these drip sequences to a product so that when someone buys the product, they get the drip rules applied to them. So I have two products already made. If I didn't have these here, it would have just said, hey, you gotta make a product. But let's go ahead and create a new product. And for this new product, we're going to use just our course that we were, that we were working on before. And that course is how to write email sequences that convert. And I'm going to add my course to my product. And again, there's a whole video on this. I'll click add product and click done. And now I can click on this product and I can come in here and I can find the drip tab on the left. The drip tab on the left is where it's a very simple interface. I'm going to say for this product and this course in this product, what drip feed schedule applies. And I'm going to choose the evergreen repeating. So remember, someone buys the product every, what do we set, day or week, they'll get access to another lesson. So that's the drip feed schedule for this course in this product. Now I can go back to my, uh, my product dashboard and I can come in here and say, um, Doug's bundle of courses, if someone buys Doug's bundle of courses, well, I want a different drip schedule. So this is a good time to look at this interface for how to write email sequences that convert. I created drip campaigns for how to craft high converting opt-in offers. I did not. So there are no drip uh, options here. I can create a new campaign by clicking here. But for this course, I'm going to apply specific date demo. This one says only after, what did we say, the New Year's Day or was this 1228? Whatever, this is the rule that's going to apply here. Now, you should be thinking, wait a minute, you just applied two conflicting drip rules to the same course. How do I know which one applies? Well, what happens if someone buys Doug's bundle of courses, and if I jump back here, and somehow someone bought how to write email sequences that convert? Well, this is why Thrive was pretty smart. In case you were silly and accidentally created some conflicts in your drip schedules, the product highest on the list, so you can see here I'm reordering these, the product highest on the list will be the drip campaign that applies. So if I already owned, let's say how to write email sequences that convert, and I somehow went over and bought this bundle of courses that this product is in and I had drip rules in that, well, that drip rule would apply to me. So just bear that in mind. I think it's important to recognize that maybe bundling courses with drips is probably not the best option, um, but you can just bear that in mind. The highest product reigns supreme. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at in this drip feature video for Thrive Apprentice 4.0 is a new access restriction rule. And that is that content is locked and the drip feed is still in protection mode. Basically saying someone is trying to access a lesson or a module that they haven't gotten access to from the drip feed schedule yet. Maybe it's not the 1st of January yet. Maybe it's not uh, a week later yet. So here what you can do is you can set a default site behavior, which you can edit under your other options, or you can come in and say, I want to create custom content that the user will see if they try to access the course while it's still locked in the drip feed. And this would be a great place to say, instead of just saying like, you can't access this, someone might be like, why can't I access that? I bought the course, right? Maybe someone didn't understand what drip meant. This is a great opportunity to re-explain to them this content is still locked because content is released weekly. If you'd like to view the schedule, click here. It's just a great opportunity to serve your user better, create a better user experience, rather than just one of those default membership plugin pages that says, error, you can't access this restricted content. Okay, so that's gonna do it for the drip features inside of Thrive Apprentice 4.0. There's a lot coming to Thrive Apprentice, and I know that this was one of the most highly requested features. I know that I certainly got asked about it all the time from my clients, and I'm just so glad that we can retire some of those clunky, older, less user-friendly and restrictive membership plugins, and finally just use drip features inside of Thrive Apprentice that are extremely, as you saw, extremely easy to use and quite powerful, especially for engagement and user experience. So that'll do it for me. Please definitely check out the other videos that I have for Thrive Apprentice 4.0, including uh, the products video that I've mentioned now probably five times. You can find that somewhere up here or down here. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment or head over to convology.com to the full write-up that I have for drip features and the rest of Thrive Apprentice 4.0. So I'll see you in the next one.